Welcome back to another construct video and in this video we're going to make three lifts ranging from something really really simple to something a lot more advanced. So let's get started. First I'm going to take my lift here which is this particular sprite. I'm going to start by adding some behaviors. Now there's two main behaviors I want. The first one I want is the solid behavior so I'm able to stand on it and the second one I want is my tween which is going to be doing our movement for our lift. Next I'm going to go into my instance variables and I'm going to add two. The first one's going to be called direction. I'm going to set this to one. I'll explain this use a little bit later. And the second one that we want is distance. So how far do we want this lift to move every single time that we stand on it? I'm going to start this off at 200. But I'll show you how you can adjust this for each individual lift in your level. Now we can go to our event sheet and there's not too much events to go on with our first lift. So the first one we want is we want to check if our player is touching our lift. Now we can't use the overlapping an object because this does not work for a solid object because you can't overlap something that's solid, but you can overlap it at an offset. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our lift. I'm going to set the Y offset to one. This just moves the hitbox by one pixel, which means we can now check if we're just above it. I'm then going to add another condition. This is going to be a system. And we want this to be trigger once while true. This means when we get to the top of the lift, it doesn't start moving again. It will stay at the top until we stand back on it a second time. I'm going to go to the left and click on this side panel, right click, and I'm going to add a sub event. Now this sub event is going to be for our lift. And we're just going to check if anything is playing. And we're just going to invert this because we don't want our lift to re-trigger if it's already moving. It needs to finish where it's moving first before it can start moving in a different direction. Now there's two bits of code that we need to add as our actions. So our first one is going to be our lift. And we're going to do this tween one property. Now this lift is going to move in the Y direction, but you can change this code if you want a lift that moves on the X plane. And our tags, we can set this up. I'm going to set this up as moving. And then we want our end value. Now this is going to be lift dot Y and then we're going to minus, and then inside the brackets is where we're going to put our two instance variables, so lift.distance, and then we're going to times this by lift.direction, close brackets. Now, in terms of time, you have this changing depending on how far the lift goes. So if the lift goes 1,000 pixels versus 100 pixels, you expect it to be slower. So the easy fix for this is we're going to do lift.distance divided by and then I'm going to go 100. So if you're traveling 200 pixels, it'll take you two seconds. If you're traveling 800 pixels, it'll take you eight seconds. And you can play around with these numbers. And hit done. Final thing we're going to do is we're going to take our lift and we're going to set the value of direction. And this is where the clever bit comes in. It's set to one at the moment. We're going to do lift dot direction. So the current direction being one times minus one. This means that it will now change from a minus because a minus times a positive gives you a minus. And then the next time it will be a minus, so a minus times a minus gives us a positive. So we're switching between positives and minus every single time. And this means our elevator is either going to go up or down. And that is it. This is your basic lift. So now if I walk over, the lift will start moving up. But you'll see it doesn't go up all the way. If I jump off the lift and I go back on it, it will start moving down. Then you can go to each individual lift in your level, click on it, and you can change the distance required. I know that it takes 350 pixels to get to my top platform. So I can click and I can move on it and my lift will start going up. I can get to the top, walk off, walk back on, or maybe jump back on, and it will start moving down again. If I want my lift to move in the opposite direction to begin with, I just change this to minus one and it works exactly the same but now it starts by going down first and then when it gets to the bottom I can jump off and then when I jump back on again it will move back to where it was before. There's a really really nice lift if you're on a budget with your events and you want something really really quick and simple for your game. The only drawbacks with this lift is if we bring this down and for every reason that I jump back off I've got no way of getting back to this lift now to recall it. This thing will fix in our next lift. 
Now the second lift we're going to make is still going to be up and down only, but we're going to add a button in now that we can call the lift from any point. So if we do miss the lift or the lift is not there, we can call it to come back down. So for this, we need two sprites. We need a button and we need an arrow key. This is just a sort of quality of life thing that just tells us which key that we have to press to call the elevator. Now for this key, I'm just going to move it out of the way. And while this is not required, I am going to give it a behavior. And the behavior that I'm going to give it is the sign behavior. So if I grab the sign behavior, and I'm just going to change a couple of properties. So first of all, I don't want this to move, but I do want to change the size of it. I don't want a sine wave, I want to use a square wave. And the period is going to be set to 2. And the magnitude is also going to be set to 2. Now, what this allows us to do is if I just move this down a sec and I play it, is this gives almost like a button press to say, press me. So this will appear above our button when we meet a certain requirement. And the requirements are going to be as simple as we're overlapping the button and the elevator is ready to be called. This will pop up and this just shows us that we need to press this particular key. So this arrow key can now move off screen and we can go to our button. I'm just going to edit its animations. I'm going to add a new image point and I'm going to set the Y value of this to be minus 100. And this is going to be where our button is going to spawn when we're overlapping it. So I'm going to go to my event sheets and I'm going to add in some lines of code. So first one I'm going to say is button, scroll down to on created. And when it's created, I want to take my button and I want to spawn that little uh, arrow key down for it. So arrow key and image point one. So this is now going to spawn. And as soon as it spawns, I'm going to make it invisible. So arrow and then set visible and invisible because we don't want it to appear straight away. Next, we're going to go to our events. and We're going to set up a condition to say why it would be visible. So for that, the player needs to be overlapping the button. We also need to have a second condition to this. We also want our lifts to not be moving. So I'm just going to take the is any playing and just invert that. And then finally, we don't want all of these um, down arrow keys to be playing. We only want the one that's near the button. So we're gonna add one final condition and we're gonna go arrow, scroll down, and we've got this pick nearest furthest. We want the one that's nearest to button.x and button.y, and this will take the button in our condition, so the one we're overlapping. So if all of those are met, we're just going to simply add a little bit of a check that takes our arrow and sets it visible. Then we're going to click on the left side and add an else statement. And if none of those conditions are true, we're going to take the same arrow key and set it invisible. So now we've got this button set up that when we're in front of it, an arrow key will appear to say, press this and the elevator will move. But the problem is the elevator is not moving. Well, we need a couple more things, first of all. First thing is we need to go and add a new object and this is gonna be a keyboard. Now I've added mine already, but you can find this under the input settings and grab an input object. And I'm just gonna click on the left side once more and add a sub event. And I'm gonna check if the keyboard button down is pressed. So on key pressed, down arrow and press okay, and then done. I can then take both these bits of code, copy and paste them and put them here. And this is our next lift set up. So if I move over, I press the down key, my lift will move automatically. You see the key disappears again until it gets to the top. I can press this once more and the lift will come back. I can stand on it still as normal. And then if for any reason I don't reach it, it's stuck at the top, I can call the lift to come back down and I'm able to jump on it again. Now this has some issues. First of all, we're only ever moving up or down. The second issue we've got is if I hit this down key, I've actually got a second lift and both of these are moving based on the same buttons. And you might not want this. You might want independent buttons for independent lifts. So this is a really, really quick fix to this particular bit of code. All we're going to do is take our button. We're going to edit its instance variables. And we're going to have one called lift number. And we'll set this to zero by default. We're then going to take our lift, add another instance variable to this. And this is going to have the same one lift number. And again, we'll set this to zero. 
We're then going to take all our lifts that we want to be activated by these buttons. So lift number, I'm going to set this now to 1. I'm going to set both these buttons to have the lift number of 1 as well. And the other lift that I've got on this side here, I'm actually going to move it so it overlaps so we can see this really quick and easy when we do our demo. I'm going to leave that there. And this is going to have a lift number of 0. Oops, so lift number 1, lift number 1. So I just need to change this one to 0, like so. In my event sheet then, I'm then just going to do a check. Then in our event sheet, we're just going to take line 4, add a new condition. And for this one, we're just going to click on lift. Make sure you do this on the lift and not on the button. And we're just going to compare its instance variables. So compare instance variables. I'm going to check if lift number equals button dot lift number. So if they're the same. And if we test this now, you'll see that when we hit the down key, only this lift actually moves. So this is a nice fix. You can have multiple lifts in your level but you can actually choose which buttons activate which lifts. Now, there are some other issues with this in terms of we can still only move up and down. So we'll fix this in our advanced elevator. So for our final lift, we want the ability to now go up and down. So let's start with our button first of all. I'm only going to use one lift for this. I'm going to delete that one and I'm going to edit the animation of my button. Now, I want the origin point to be at the very bottom for this, just like that. And then I'm just going to hit the X. This does mean that I do need to move my buttons now, just a little bit lower than what they were before. And I'm going to add in one final button at the very bottom. So I've got three buttons. And then I'm going to go to my event sheet. And instead of using this tween move and have the different directions, I'm actually going to delete both these lines of code. And actually, I can get rid of a lot of these instance variables because we're going to rewrite a lot of this code. So I can go to my lift, edit instance variables, and let's delete these where I remember. I'm still going to keep lift number, but everything else is going to go. So what we're going to do instead, well, when we press the down button on a particular lift, we're going to add an action. And we're going to use our lift, and we're going to use the tween property. We're going to still use the term moving, but instead of moving a set distance, we're just going to go to the button. So we're going to set this to be button.y. And then the only thing that we need to do on top of this is we're going to add an in bracket lift.height divided by 2. This means no matter how big or tall your lift is, it will compensate for that and it will take the middle of the lift. In terms of the time, we could just set an arbitrary time, but we might be calling a lift from the very top after the lift has been at the very bottom. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to do something a little bit more complicated. We're going to get distance inside the brackets, which takes in four different arguments. First, it's looking for an x value. So we're going to take button dot x, comma, button dot y, comma, then lift.x, comma, and lift.y. This is going to return a value working out a diagonal distance between those two objects. So the buttons and the lift uh, sort of distance. I'm going to divide this by 100. So if it's 800 pixels away, it will take eight seconds to take that time to get there. And that's the first bit set up. So now, no matter which button we're at, we can now call the lift and the lift will come to us. If I drop down to this one, the lift will come to me here. And then if I was able to jump back up, I could test that going to that other button as well. Now, the main thing we want is not to be able to call it from a button. That's useful. We can now call from any button, but we actually want to be able to stand on the elevator and pick either the ability to go up or down. So I'm going to start by taking this arrow here and I'm going to rename it. And I'm going to call it arrow button because this is going to be for the button only. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to clone it two more times. And I'm going to rename these. So the first one I'm going to do is going to be called up arrow. And this is if I want to move upwards on the lift. And the second one I want is going to be down arrow. Oh, not deletes. Let's try that again. And this is if I want to move downwards on the lift. So down arrow. And I'm just going to drag these in. So I've got an example of both of these. I'm going to get these to the size that I want, and they're going to be the same size as this one here. So this one's 43. Let's change this to 45 by 45. 
And I'm just going to do the same for the other two buttons. So I've got my buttons in now. You'll see that my up arrow is not facing up. So I'm just going to edit this animation and I can just rotate this really, really quickly. I'm going to go back to my lift and I'm going to edit the animations for this. And just like we did with our button, I'm going to add some image points to show where these buttons are going to go. And I'm going to set this first one to be minus 100, so it's up in the air, and set the X to about 50. And for the second image point, I'm going to do minus 100 again. And instead of taking off 75, I'll add 75 to give it 200. So I've now got two image points where my buttons could spawn to tell me, do I want to go up or down? Now we're ready to move into our event sheet, and we're going to be dealing with taking this line of code here. First thing is we're going to take this lift is not playing, and we're going to add it to line one now. We're also going to delete the trigger words if true, because that one no longer applies. We can now come to this code below. So we're going to start by taking our button, and we want to just compare its Y. So scroll down to compare Y, and I'm going to start by checking if it's greater than, not greater than or equal to, just greater than. And for this, we're going to take lift.y minus brackets lift.height divided by 2. And again, the reason we do this lift.height is so it doesn't matter how tall our lift is, this code will always work. It's always good practice to have that set of code available. So we're going to check if it is greater than. If it is, we're then going to spawn in an arrow. So we're going to get lift, scroll down, spawn another object, and that object is going to be our down arrow. And we'll set this to image point one. We can then copy and paste this code, flip the greater than to less than, and instead of doing a down arrow, we'll spawn an up arrow. And we'll set this to image point two. So now if I step on the lift at any point, these two arrows will spawn. And I'm just going to take this bit of here, so I'm just clicking on this line at the side, add an else statement, and I'm just going to destroy these two if that's not true. So if I'm not on the lift, these two are going to be destroyed. And we'll do the same for the other one. So destroy down and destroy up. Now these only spawn if there's a button higher than where we currently are or lower than where we currently are. So if I delete this button here and hit the play button, you'll see that I would only have the ability to move downwards like so. And if I was to take this lift here and move this, I'll only have the ability to move up because there are only buttons above me, not below me. So final thing that we need to do is go to our event sheet and we're gonna add in another blank sub event. So add sub events. And we're going to check which buttons have been pressed. So this one, we want to check if the down key has been pressed. And we're going to add one more condition to this. And there might be multiple buttons above us. So what we need to do is out of the buttons that are above us, we want to actually pick the one that's nearest to our lift. So pick nearest furthest. And we're going to do lift.x and lift.y. So we're only going to the nearest lift available. And if that's all true, we can take this code that we've done already and just paste it in. We can then take this whole line of code and just add it below, making sure there is a sub event like so. So your code should be laid out this way. So if you collapse one, all of it should disappear down to the else statement. And if you collapse these two, we should be able to get rid of these two lines of code here. Final thing we're going to do is obviously flip this to be an up arrow instead. So we're checking the up key. And finally, if we do press the up arrow, we're going to jump. And we don't want that. What we want to do instead is we want to keep the player on the lift while they're doing the action. If they choose to jump after, that's fine. But we want them to make it so they don't jump when they press the up key. So all we're going to do is on the moment here where we spawn the up arrow key, we're actually going to take our player scroll down and set their jump strength to be zero. The moment we step off the elevator, this else when these are no longer activated or the elevator is moving, we want to restore that jump value. So I'm going to click on my player and find out that the jump strength is 650 or 652 because I keep clicking on it, 650. And I'm just going to add that action back. So player dot set jump strength back to 650. 
So now if we run this for one final time, you can see that I can walk over to the first lift and you can see that I've got the option to go up or down. I'm going to go down first and this will send me downwards. I can then only go up because there's no buttons below me. So I can go up and I can go up once more. And then I should only have the option to go down, which I do. I can then walk off this. I can then use any button to call the elevator and bring it to me and the up and down arrows come back. So I hope you've enjoyed these three different types of elevators. The first one is really great if you're working on an event budget and then we get all the way to something like this which is really really good to think like a metroidvania sort of style game finally for the best possible lift you need to right click insert a new object scroll down and import the audio object import some music go to your event sheets and add one brand new event for lift and we're just going to do a check to see if any is playing on our tween. And if so, we're gonna do audio, play, and we're gonna play our elevator music. Now it's set at zero on the decibels, that's the original volume, so we can hit done, and we can play our elevator music. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see inside of Construct and I'll see you in the next video.